ESL. This is uh, January the 27th. It's gonna be game one of group four here. We have uh, Leroy, who's um, nearly top 20 rank. Abnicide, rank 141. Ziggy, 109. Uh, a couple big boss players and two other boss players in this lobby. Uh, so there was a patch a couple of days ago. It did change the game a little bit, but we will get to see in this game how the meta has a meta, how the meta has uh, switched up, or if it has at all for that matter, comparing it to last week. So early rounds, we're not gonna see much. Everybody is always gonna just buy whatever units they have in the shop, since you only start with five units and five gold. Uh, from your shop, so you just gotta go with that. Oh, you're right, it is just chatting. Oh my goodness, I didn't even realize that. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, we changed it. Okay, I was wondering where, where like, all the Underlord people were at. You, you, <laughs> you guys are all the notification squad, that's awesome. Okay, so... Early rounds. We're gonna so the biggest item to see on round one is like who which players get contract. Because the moment someone gets contract, they're gonna try to play into Legion Commander if they can, and they're gonna try to like uh, win through that. And it doesn't seem like there's any players with contract right now. Ziggy, oh it looks like Ziggy got one. So any players who have not equipped their items, Amnicide, I think didn't get one, right? Yeah. So Ziggy is the only one who has contract. So there is a very good chance that he might just play into um, Legion Commander here or some kind of build like that if he does get enough Druids and Legion Commanders in the early game. And I would say currently that Legion Commander builds are probably the, the best still, especially when you have a big time contract uh, that you pick up in the early rounds. So Ziggy starting off with a warrior board, but he is fighting into Batrider Ogre. So one thing you guys should know is that uh, Batrider is probably one of the best like round one units. It's because it has like ways to amplify its own damage. So like the more stickies it casts, the more damage it does, right? So early game there's a lack of damage output because you know you're one stars and most units just have a lot of HP or using a lot of tanks and Batrider can kind of just stop that and Leroy going straight to level 4 and jamming in an axe onto this board so he's got knights he's got brutes and he's got a demon now he, this is probably one of the strongest opening boards that you can have by round 3 and I think he's going to be win streaking heavily with this kind of start and he's also holding Legion Commanders onto his bench, so if he can find like a Legion 2 star at an appropriate time, Big Nasty Mom, thank you for the gift itself. Okay, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go and turn off the um, <laughs> notifications, okay, while we cast the game. But if you guys wish to sub, you can do it afterwards. Thank you so much though, I appreciate that. Oh, that's not it. Thank you, Vinamina. Alright. So, um, Sleep here has... He's in second, or in first currently with a win streak. I'm really surprised he's winning because he's got a Legion Commander 1 star on his board. And that's not a unit that wins rounds early game. And which is what's really surprising is that it's one three duels already <laughs> this legion commander has won three duels in the first three rounds as a one star and that's extremely impressive so let's see if um, the legion can get two starred using the druid bonus it did not and this might not be the fight that it will win this time it will feed damage to the chaos knight of leroy and leroy already having a really strong board is going to get an extra five damage onto his chaos knight that's really helpful for him He's going to be happy about that. That's going to help him also win streak a bit more. You always think like this 5 damage, 10 damage, or like 8 damage that dual gives away is like negligible, but it really isn't. Like 
So that damage adds up, right? This is the damage that you're attaining without having to use any items or any other buffs. And that's like, it's not possible to attain it in any other way apart from your opponent giving it to you. So that's a really big deal. <clears throat> so Abnicide here does have a Weaver 2 star, very strong unit in the early game, especially with insects. And he's got Scrappy, so he's hard echoing to 20 gold here, holding only Scrappy units. Um, he's got another Tinker in the shop, he also has two Legions. I don't think we're going to see him go into Legion Commanders. Um, one thing he can do is buy the Legion Commanders so that the other players can't get them. Because we know there's a few players who are already looking for them. Uh, so it could be a good idea just to hold them into your bench until next turn, then sell them off for economy uh, if you need to. Because if you can't hit economy by selling them off, then it's also good to keep them for an extra turn so that nobody else can get them, right? Since there's only a set amount of units in the pool. Uh, and Legion Commander is just one of those units that you just generally want to always buy so other players can't get them. Because they're a very important uh, key, key piece in some builds. So we see Amnesty, he buys them, he's going to hold on to them uh, at least for the next turn. See his options as well while he's at it but i wouldn't recommend for him to like go into legion commander builds while he already has such a strong scrappy opener because scrappies are just as strong as legion i think legion commander builds have a higher chance of winning if they can hit their units um the ones that are good to build uh, beat scrappies especially so but i think uh scrappies are much more consistent as a comp. So Leroy, like we said, he is win streaking, doing extremely well. Let's take a look at the other boards here. We got a mage board, loose streaking by Frolic. Ziggy is trying to play into Legion, and he also has a Stonehall Cloak, and he's got a tree and two star in his shop. So that's gonna be a really strong uh, board for Leroy next turn because now he can finish a tree and two and he can level up and put in his legion commander if he wishes to play with the legion two star because now that he has two two star druids he can already get a legion two star onto the board and start building up some damage on his legion commander because with a contract and a cloak this is like what well, you know is considered exodia it's because the moment you have contract your legion is already going to get a lot of damage as long as you sacrifice some units and then this legion will get a lot of kills as well because it's the one who's your dpser and doing a lot of damage then the stonehawk cloak is going to give her extra health and then she's going to become impossible to kill while also doing a lot of dps so the only thing missing for ziggy here is his demon bonus and he already got that on the board too and oh, oh also he's gonna want to get a uh, warlock in asap so he's got he can activate his contract so he did sell his shadow fiend he wants to play to the bat rider uh ck instead he wants to play to the knights there's a beastmaster in shop i'm not entirely sure if he's gonna buy that because uh one it's a two cost unit and it's a bit more expensive and two he's already got an amazing board right here uh with these units i can't imagine him fitting this beastmaster into this board anytime soon he's gonna be like level at level five he's gonna put like a warlock in uh maybe there's a chance that he might transition into a brute comp instead Oh, sorry, a brawny comp instead of a legion commander. But it's really hard to try to fit Beastmaster on top of like Warlock, CK, the Druids, Legion. It's just a lot of units that uh, you gotta try and put in. So we got a CK, Axe, and a Warlock in the shop. All, all really strong pairs for Ziggy here. I'm surprised that he's not considering to level already since he does have a contract that he can utilize if he does level up. So let's take a look here at Leroy again, about to complete his win streak. We'll see if he manages to complete it. He has uh, an Omni Knight in now. He did go to level 5. He wants to stay uh, competitive with all the other players who also leveled up and wants to protect his win streak. So Leroy also managed to have two more legions on his bench. So he is trying to play into some kind of knight brute legion board as well. 
if he can. He's already starting to stock up on druids. Since he's already level 5, the druids that he's most likely going to play is going to be like Tree and Protector and LD, the higher costing druids instead of the lower costing units, druids, since he doesn't have any of those ones. So he does lose the ra uh, round to Frolix, uh, 2 star board. I guess he has Insects, the Razor Bounty too, they're really strong as well here with the Assassins. Um, it looks like Frolic was going for Mages, but he might might be transitioning straight into Assassins here. Ending uh, Leroy's win streak was actually very beneficial for the entire lobby. Because if Leroy completed that win streak, that was a lot of gold that was going to go into his pocket. And he's just going to be able to keep leveling up and finding higher costing units after that. Abnicide here is the next one on a win streak. Um, he's about to complete it also next turn if he can win. He did find a Legion 2 star in the shop, but I don't think it would be a very good idea for him to buy that. So he does roll over it. That's very perfect for him. He actually takes a casual roll on round 9. And he manages to find a Brood 2 star and an Alchemist. That's an insane board for round 9 right now. Alchemist on round 9 plus... Brood making Warlock synergy and having insects. This is a this is a lot of damage on uh, Amnesty's board. I think he should be able to win this, and he's gonna be able to complete his win streak. So this scrappy board completing a win streak is gonna be putting him in a really good position to transition into the late game, well, with a lot of gold. So the reason why Amnesty did not get the Legion 2 star here is because it just doesn't fit into Scrappies. And let's see what kind of Underlord he's going to plan to take here. We have an, an Essex with Golem and he goes for the Let's Go Crazy Hobgin. Very interesting. He's opting for the attack speed and the stun. It's going to be quite powerful, especially if he decides to play with Hunters later in the game in this Scrappy comp. Leroy has 50 gold currently, manages to find a Shadow Fiend. Um, did he take some rolls on level 5 there? Is that what happened? Oh yeah, he did find a Shadow Fiend 2 star. He's also got Axe 2, Lysander 2, a lot of really strong upgrades for that matter. Uh, he did get out of the Knights, he did sell his Legion Commanders as well. He decided that uh, they were not being completed early enough for him and he just made a complete trans transition into a four brute warlock board with a really powerful shadow fiend uh official blue here yeah, did, did have does have spirits online uh they are all two starred as well that's very very impressive Still is level 5 though, has not gone to level 6 yet, has some knights on the bench, uh, also a Shadow Fiend 2 star, there's a lot of 2 stars on this board for official blue, very strong situation for him. There's an LD in the shop, another Shadow Fiend, let's see what he's gonna do here, he's gonna take the LD, he's gonna reroll, doesn't find much else, there's a couple Morphlings, he spends the rest of his gold to level up to 6. Throws in a Chaos Knight that's going to make Knights and give Shadow Fiend an extra 50% pure damage as well. Because of the extra Demon that's on the board. So here comes a Spear combo. Uh, dealing, you know, a fair amount of damage, not a whole lot. It does buy the two Morphlings in the shop. So we might actually see Official Blue go into some Mages as well. Yeah. Shadow Fiend would not be a bad unit for mages either. Since I mean he already does have a two star, it's not like you're gonna sell it. And but he will lose out not enough damage to sustain this board. Uh Ziggy. Ziggy Ziggy has a Legion Commander paired up. That's gonna be really strong as soon as he gets a two star. Already has 24 damage, um, does have a CK 2 star completed as well, alongside 2 star brawnies. 
So with Brutes, this is like an absolutely insane board. I'm looking at Ziggy to uh, get a lot of get a lot of uh, wins here and potentially starting another win streak. So unfortunately, the Legion does do the Axe, and Axe is a very tanky unit. It's not going to get damage from this fight. One thing to note as well is that Ziggy has not put in his Warlock yet, so his contract is not yet useful. But with this many 2 stars on his board, it's uh, no surprise that he's just destroying every round. Sleep here. Also trying to play into Legion, but with 1 star Legion and not... No Druids is like... I don't, I don't feel it's reasonable to do that. Just losing way too many rounds. So there's a Juggernaut completed. Also has a 3 star Shadow Shaman nearby. Does, a, does find a Beast Mess in the shop. Still taking some more rolls here. Very interesting. So we're seeing a lot of players taking some rolls on 5 and 6 quite intriguing as to why they're um, opting for that maybe because they have a lot of upgrades and that's how they think that they can hit some power spikes earlier it's not something that you see too often most of the time you see players just saving gold and trying to level up but uh, rolling on 5 and 6 seems to be quite beneficial for some of these guys right now to hit some earlier power spikes within the game so Leroy actually starting up another win streak uh, his first one ended on 7 and now he's back up to 5 again uh, with the Brute board so very consistent throughout this whole game uh, his board let's find an alchemist in the shop very powerful end game unit that everybody always seeks because it does minus armor onto the enemy board and can also kill insects which is extremely valuable since insects is uh, something a lot of boards tend to use and he's gonna fight into amnicide he probably hope he probably wishes that he did have a alchemist in here instead of maybe like the witch doctor for example so that he could have something to kill these insects and also add the extra minus armor but it does not matter the brute's too strong here with the shadow fiend two star and leroy going to inch a step closer into completing his win streak he's on six now so two more and that's gonna be a big chunk of gold for him So, take a look at Grips here. Grips got um, Savages. Four Savages, huh? Very interesting. Does have Ench Treant, so Treant does become a two star. Playing with three Brutes only. Does not have an Ogre Magi. Does decide to play the Doombringer over the Alchemist. Um, having another Brute on the board and that Doom to just delete. Or stop a unit from being able to cast spells. And Grips also being able to beat Amnicide's board. It looks like Amnicide has fallen off a little bit since the time that he completed his win streak. Um, does not have as many two star upgrades on his melee frontline units, so they are dying quite fast uh, at the moment. He does have a Tinker 2 star with a Midas though. That's very helpful. And finds another Midas or a Vanguard. Both items are pretty good. Um, after the nerf to Midas, I wouldn't say it's as auto pick as it used to be. It is still very good. But in this situation, Amnesty decides to go with a Vanguard because he his frontline is extremely weak and he doesn't want to fall too far behind. Sees a Sniper in the shop uh, paired up. Wondering if he will decide to take any rolls here to try and find some upgrades. And there it is. He took one roll. Does not find anything. Finds a Snapfire. Might need to sell something. And he does. To pull his Sniper back. Doesn't want to spend any more gold in this. Because he does want to go to level 8. 
to start trying to find Medusa and his gyrocopters. And this is going to be a loose streak actually for Abnicide. Five loose streak. That is really painful. Or maybe not. Let's see if this Weaver can outplay these two guys. Oh, no, not gonna happen. Not enough HP on the Weaver or damage. Either one. So he's on a five loose streak, but he's still in third place and he can hit huge power spikes. Like that sniper, for example. He's got a very expensive bench. Does have another Viper in the shop and can uh, pair up a Weaver to go for a three star Weaver. But I'm not sure that would be a good idea. So yeah, he decides to sell off the dragons. He's already got the Sniper 2 in now. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have space to play Drow Ranger in this situation. So he can have Hunters. The Sniper and the Weaver Hunters, uh, they benefit a lot if, they, if you complete the Hunter Alliance here. So next gold for Amnesty is just going to level to A tier. He's going to invest 30 gold. And then with the extra XP that you get... For next turn he's gonna be level eight without having to spend an additional five gold here and then we're gonna see him put the draw in for the hunter bonus and that's gonna give him a lot of strength onto his board while also looking for the gyrocopter and the medusa so we're just gonna see his next shop uh see if he hits a medusa or gyrocopter with the next reroll and then we'll go look at someone else's board here so sleep going down to 13 health here with the legion one star still oh does find two aces but those are not the ones he's looking for and he does not find any aces that he's looking for with the reroll so let's look at sleep here sleep finally manages to finish his legion two star on round 18 only he's got 25 damage is playing a bra uh, a few alliances not a whole lot i think sleep situation is not looking so hot for him And he will fight Abnicide, so let's see how this fight goes. I I feel like um, Sleep is Sleep is gonna he's gonna be losing a lot of health here. Oh, the Shadow Fiend does go off though. Manages to full heal himself. There's a nice enthrall on this Weaver, but not enough damage I think before the enthrall runs out. And there it is, Sleep going to be taking 11 damage down to two health. So Grips here also being chunked for 14. Uh, is This is the 4 Savage board. Doesn't look like there's a lot of upgrades on this board that are very impactful. I mean the Alchemist 2 star is really nice but the range DPS in here is just... You can't seem to find it. They're all melee units so they're gonna kind of block each other. Does find a Bristleback 2 star and an Ogre 2 star though. That could be extremely helpful. This Weaver has 31 kills on Amnesty's board, plus 93 damage. This is absolutely insane how much damage this Weaver has right now. Weaver has a 1.11 attack rate, so it attacks extremely fast. So you can see like his DPS is like 250 um, with the pike on him right now. Or 364 for that matter, jeez. That's when it triggers the Hunter bonus. So very powerful. The Tinker does get doomed in this fight, so no rockets will be coming out. But it does seem like Amnicide has uh, stabilized here, able to beat the top one board. As we said, the moment gets to level 8 and is able to put the Drow 2 with the Sniper 2, Weaver 2, and the Hunter Synergy, Amnicide should be able to stabilize and um, start winning some rounds. Amnesty is going to look to go to level 9 now to try and have an easier time to get these uh, aces as well. So Leroy's board here. So he did complete the win streak a bit earlier in the game. Does have a minus on his Shadow Fiend as well. So he has a lot of gold that he generated for himself through those two things. Uh, is playing into some kind of like a Warlock Brute board. There's a Viper 2 star and 2 Dragonites on his bench. He is looking for one more Dragonite to play into Dragons. 
So he will transition into that as well. Hey Gabby. Yeah, Jitch's game had uh, two bots in it, so we decided to cast this game instead. But if they decide, if they have more players later, we can go check that out. So sleep actually beating Frolic's board. So let's take a look at Frolic right here. Frolic is level nine on round twenty. That's really fast to be level nine. Normally, you see people going to nine on round twenty two, end of round twenty two. Um, but it looks like Frolic is already on level nine. Has pretty much one stars on his board. So in these kind of situations, I feel like. When you have so many one stars, it's much more important to try and roll and hit your upgrades than it is to level up because you're playing with like Slark one, Ember one. Does finish a Slark two now? There's another Ember pair in the shop. Does hit a Faces Void. That's a really strong uh, assassin to pick up. Very important. And oh, there's an Alchemist in the shop, but does not have enough gold, so has to lock it. But there's a very good chance that Frolic might just die here. Uh, also, the positioning of his assassins mean that the Queen of Pain and the Viper will not jump out. And the Nyx assassin also not able to cast his Vendetta effect. Running into Ziggy's board here. Ziggy very, very powerful with that contract build. And it looks like uh, Frolic is going to take a fall here. And it's going to be out in 7th place. So Sleep with the 2 HP comeback. Oh, nope. Just lives long enough to get 6th place as well. Grips gonna get a minimum 5th place outcome here. Official blue. With the spirit mages alongside a shadow fiend. I would probably put the mask of madness on the CK and not the SF since you're playing mages anyway. And you kind of want your SF to cast a spell so he can full heal someone with the warlock synergy. I feel like this mask of madness on shadow fiend is kind of wasted. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. We're gonna keep a close eye on the two boards that have below 20 health here. Grips is fighting into Leroy. Leroy, the top one board at 59 health, does have a Mask of Madness on his Life Stealer as well. So let's see how this fight plays out. Grips has a bunch of two-star brutes here. The Doom goes off to the Axe, so Axe will not be able to cast Call. Bristleback getting really close to falling here. If the Bristleback dies, that's gonna be a lot of damage output. But it does not die, this life stealer falls first, and Leroy is actually gonna be the one to take a lot of damage here from Grips' board. And that's gonna be a minus 16 there. Let's take a look at Official Blue fighting into Grips. And Official Blue able to beat out Grips' board with the Mages and the Disruptor. Um, still does have the Shadow Fiend with the Mask of Madness. So these double minuses can potentially help him come back into the game if he can hit some more upgrades here. That's gonna be pretty nice. So no one actually dying on round 22 there. Abnicide falls to 24 health. Does find a second sniper two star. Um, has a third. Has a has a seventh sniper in his shop. Trying to go for that three star. It's gonna be really good for him if he's able to complete that and find his uh, aces. So we're gonna look at grips again. Grips now fighting into Ziggy's warlock legion commander build. Or sorry the. The contract Legion Commander build. This is probably the strongest board at the moment. Um, and here it is. Even through all the Brutes, the Legion Commander not able to be held down. Grips is going to slowly lose out on this round here. The Legion Commander completely healthy. And there it is. Oh, Official Blue actually getting chunk for 18 damage first. It's gonna die before Grips. Grips gonna get 4th place. Official Blue getting 5th. And we're down to the top 4. I mean, top 3 already. Amnesty was able to repel off uh, Leroy's ghost over there. So he buys the Sniper now. There's a Medusa in the shop. He can sell the, Deuce, sell the Jaw Ranger for the Deuce if he wants. I think that would be a good idea. Because he is fighting into melee boards like 
the Legion Commander with the contract and also the four brutes. I think that's much more important than the Jar Ranger giving 20 attack speed. Because the Dusa <coughs> stun is extremely powerful against these kind of me melee units. So we're gonna look at Abnerside's fight here. He is fighting into Leroy's Dragon Brutes. The double sniper is able to take out two units instantly. The Hobgen managed to get out Let's Go Crazy before he dies. But the Tinker once again getting doomed up. No rockets will be coming out. And Amnesite gonna get chunked here for 15 damage. And yeah, he definitely... Amnesite is in need of uh, some disables in here. Um, hopefully he can also find like two more snipers to complete that 3 star sniper. I think that's what he's hoping for. The Weavers are also two off from completion. So Ziggy here on a win streak now. Super, super strong. Um, able to beat out Leroy's... Ghost board. So we're just gonna look at Amnesty. He's down to nine health now. Take a reroll. It does not find a gyro. It's continuing to roll. Gonna stay at three gold here. Does re does replace a jar ranger with the Medusa. And finishes a Clockwork 2 side. There's also a Gyrocopter in the shop. He's probably going to have to lock that. Um, I would say in this situation, the two snipers are better. The only thing he could have done differently was maybe like sell the Dusa for the Gyro. But since he's about to die. But I think having the Dusa stuns are much more important than having Deadeye at this stage in the game. And you obviously want both. You want Dusa and the Gyro. He's, he's playing to win this game already. He knows he's at 9 health. If he loses one round, he's dead anyway. So... Playing to win the game would be to keep everything. Dusa, Gyro, try to 3 star Sniper. Or if you want to just not have to lock that in, you just sell the Weaver. So here in this fight, the Medusa with the ultimate was extremely powerful against the uh, Legion Commander board here. Had a really solid stun. Let's see what I was gonna get here. He's gonna get the hex. He's gonna put that onto the tinker. No, he got the refresher. Okay, he got the refresher. Wondering if he's thinking about putting refresher on the Medusa so he can have double stuns. Nope, does take out the sniper, puts in the gyrocopter, wants to have two gyro alts instead. Is at 12 gold currently. Let's see if he's going to roll here for his sniper. <laughs> and he does not roll because he wants to find more gold. And he's gonna find Z he's gonna find fight Ziggy's uh clone here. So let's take a look at Ziggy's board fighting into Leroy. Leroy does not have a whole lot of disables, but he does have the brutes to kind of slow down the Legion Commander's damage output. And it looks like Lyra is going to be Ziggy this time around. Ziggy spent a lot of gold leveling to 10. Was not able to um, find a lot of upgrades quite yet. But does manage to beat Amnesty's board. Maybe there was some unfortunate uh, fighting situations for Amnesty this time around. Or there was some movement on the board of Ziggy that... Allowed him to kill the enemy Dusa faster. Oh, also, Amnesty did remove his second sniper for a gyrocopter, which was probably it was probably better to keep the snipers since they were like one-shotting units on the enemy board, and also always had a chance to one-shot the Legion commander. And let's not forget that Ziggy is playing with a one-star Legion, so he has no chances of any of his druids becoming three-starred. He is still trying to roll and hit that two-star Legion if he can. So this fight, the Warlock did die, the Beastmaster got the buff, the Beastmaster falls now, the Legion Commander getting the double contract damage is not getting focused down this time around, does have plus 800 damage currently. It's gonna slowly go through this board. 
But if we get another Wish Doctor alt, Wish Doctor Paralyzing Cask, there's a very good chance that the Legion Commander will just die. And he actually he dies even before the Cask here. And Ziggy gonna lose another round. Ziggy's got one more turn left to find his Legion 2 star and a few more upgrades before he dies. Better start rolling. So nothing yet. Nothing at all. Oh, there's a disruptor two star. That's really helpful. Okay. And that's it. Oh, that's truly unfortunate. I'd probably tr sell the trolls in this situation. I mean, he's probably holding the trolls to see if he can hit a troll two star to sell the wish doctor since he does have an extra warlock. Um, and play into that. I feel one of the situations that's unfortunate for Ziggy here is that uh, his Bloodbound units are not dying fast enough for his Legion Commander to collect the damage and just destroy the fight. So it looks like Z Leroy is going to dominate this board and gonna get first place here with his Brute Dragons Warlocks. And the Legion Commander board will get second place. Oh.